Hello guys, welcome to the second video of my series on data classes in Python. So in the first video, we got a brief understanding of what are the various scenarios where we need the data classes and how to use them. And now in this video, we are going to dive a bit more deeper and we are going to see what are the different parameters that a data class um, decorator can take. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so in the last video we took the example of a class called person in which we decorated it with the data class decorator and we defined three properties that we wanted to have for every class object and it was working fine right so now um, if we want to see what are the various parameters that a data class function can take uh, we can just put shift tab here and just try to look at its signature and we see that it takes various parameters some and in optional parameters we see that there is init equal to true and we have repr we have eq order unsafe hash and frozen so we are gonna try to understand each one of them and let us start with the first one which is init okay so actually we have already seen what init does so init is an optional parameter in the data class function which is set to true by default and what init does is that it creates the init function for your class by default so let me just try to give an example let's say p is equal to person in which i pass the name i pass the age and I pass the city okay so why did this function run this way it ran this way because I had defined that I want these properties as um, for my class object so what happens is that when you try to create a new class object a initialization function is defined by default using data class which is able to accept the name age and city as the three parameters and those values are set as the properties of your class object and now if you try to see p dot name p dot age p dot city what you get is all those values nikhil 20 delhi right so in this way in it works it provides you a initialization function by default so this is one of the most important properties of data classes actually so now let's come to the next one which is repr so repr is set as true by default again and repr basically provides a function which can give you a representation of your class object so if i just try to see the representation of my class object p here i get something like this the class name and then all these properties and their corresponding values so in this way repr works so basically if I set repr equal to false what happens is that um, I get something like this a very ugly um, default kind of representation right which we were getting in the case of a very default class definition of the class person in the last video so repr works like this so let us just remove repr equal to false never a good idea to have it false right now finally we have another the last um, optional parameter which is true which is eq so eq basically is for um, getting the equality operator and the non-equality operator this one and this one so what happens is that um, if i just create two class objects p1 and i create another one p2 and now if i just try to compare them i get true why am i getting true actually these are two different class objects which means that these are p1 and p2 are actually referring to two different objects in the memory but right now p1 when compared to p2 is giving true why is it so it is so because when i put data class um, decorator over my class then a function called double underscore eq double underscore which is a magic function gets defined by default which will take your two objects which you are trying to compare and then they will be um, checked for corresponding um, properties if they are equal or not so first of all name will be checked if it is equal to or not then age and then city and finally we return the final result so in this way eq works and not equal to is also defined in the same way which is ne so this function is also defined by default when you are using the data classes and eq has been set as true so in this way we saw all the optional parameters which are by default true and we get to use them without doing anything here without making it like a function call right here right but now let's come to the order order is a another um, optional parameter which is false by default so what order does so what order will do is that it will provide you the default you can say um, implementation of the 
functions which get triggered when you try to use the less than um, greater than um, let's say less than okay <laughs> or less than equal to greater than or greater than equal to so if you try to use these operations between any two class objects then which function is triggered actually double underscore lt double underscore is triggered when you try to use this operation double underscore le double underscore is used when you try to use less than equal to double underscore gt double underscore here and double underscore GE double underscore here so all these function definitions are already uh, provided in your class definition by default when you try to use the data the, the data class um, decorator over your class with the order equal to true okay so let's try it out here um, if I just try to see p1 is greater than p2 or not I will get false so p1 is greater than p2 gives me false and if I just try to set let's say p2's age um, as 19 okay so in that case I will get true why because first of all the name was compared that was same that we came to age 20 is greater than 19 that's why p1 is greater than p2 when I get true okay and if I just remove order equal to true which is the default way we use the data classes and then if you try to compare these two things it will simply raise an error because um, right now the greater than operation is not supported between the instances of person and person which means two classes two class objects of the class person cannot be compared like this when you have set order equal to false okay so that's why we have we can use the order thing order parameter for um, getting these all these function definitions by default in our class definition okay so that is done let's move on to the next thing which is unsafe underscore hash and we have frozen so first of all let's talk about frozen okay so let's talk about frozen first of all so um, by default we can always make changes to the class properties of our class object so for example I have p is this and p dot name is let's say nikhil so I can simply do p dot name is equal to and I K H I L and then I can just check P dot name and I get is something like this right so right now I can say that the name property of my class is mutable which means it can change but if I want to restrict any properties or you can say all the properties of my class object to be um, immutable which means that they cannot be changed by using the assignment operator then in that case I can use something called frozen parameter which is set as true so if I do this let's see what happens I say um, I want to see p dot name I get it as nickel and I want to just assign it another value I get an error and what is it saying it is saying that my instance um, p is actually frozen which means that any property of my instance cannot be assigned a new value so in this way we can make all our properties of any class object immutable by setting frozen equal to true okay so we have we are done with frozen now let's move on to the last thing which is unsafe underscore hash so before going into unsafe underscore hash we actually need to understand what hash actually is right so in python there are two type of um, objects that you can say there are two type of objects one are mutable another one are immutable so mutable are those which can be changed and immutable are those which cannot be changed so for immutable objects we have something called a hash value a hash value is calculated using the value of the given object and we generate an integer out of it and that integer uniquely identifies Identifies that particular object and if and if to um, if we are able to compare two objects like this if a is b then it is sure that hash of a is hash of b and why is it so it is so because hash is generated by using the value of a and equality operator also checks the values of a and b that's why we use the hash function um, if you want to check if a and b are equal to or not okay so now um, what we're gonna do here is that let's say a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 we know that a is b hash of a is also equal to b and other thing to notice here is that hash of um, mutable objects cannot be obtained and why the hash objects of mutable objects cannot be obtained um, it is because 
the mutable objects can actually change their values and hash function is actually created using the value of the given object so if the value of the given object can change then there is no meaning of a hash value because that might also change so we will have to update it again and again so there is no meaning of a hash value for any given object because it is meant to be kept same for the entire duration of the program that's why we do not define the hash values or we can simply say that the mutable objects in python are unhashable right so now let's come to the main question here um, if I have a very simple data class like this okay so now in this particular data class I know that all the properties of my class are actually um, mutable they can change right because frozen is false by default so if I just try to check hash of p I think I should get an error right I get an error that my class person is actually unhashable what does this mean it means that my class has some properties which are which are mutable so if I just try to create the if I just try to create a hash value from all these values in my class there is no meaning of creating that hash value because these values can change right so another value or another way of getting a hash from my class object is that I can set frozen equal to true so now all my um, properties of the class object are now immutable so th that is they cannot change so now it is safe to get the hash value and that's why the hash value is being getting generated right but now the question comes that um, I am losing the flexibility I am not able to change the name age and city when I want to get the hash value so a another option like there can be some logical implementations where I may need to change name age of city or some other stage but until that is done or even that is not done I want to have some hash value so in those cases you can do unsafe underscore hash equal to true so what unsafe hash is uh, equal to true will do is that it will generate a hash value for you anyway so now we can get some kind of hash value here so what is happening here is that unsafe hash equal to true will not see if your properties of your class object are mutable or immutable it will simply take those values and generate a hash for you it is your responsibility to see if you at a later stage if you change the value of your class um, object if you change the properties of your class object then how do you deal with that hash value then so now if I just say I change p dot name equal to something else right and now I check the hash of p it is something else right so this hash value is actually changing so you cannot um, use this particular hash value safely in the entire duration of a program that's why we call it an unsafe hash okay so there can be some um, situations where you may need hash that's why you can go with the unsafe hash in those cases so this was all about um, all the different parameters that we are provided in the data class function which we use a class which we use as a class decorator um, for different classes and I hope the concept is clear if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below and that's it from this video thanks for watching